Good morning, afternoon, or evening, wherever and whenever you are. My name is Benjamin, and welcome to another Game Maker tutorial. And in this tutorial, we're going to cover timelines, um, basic timelines. We're not going to get into anything super complicated with them yet. But we're going to use the timeline to create some basic artificial intelligence for an enemy. And this is kind of uh, how I did it in my game Grain War. Uh, only it got a little bit more complicated for Grain War. But this gives you a good idea of where to start. And might give you an idea of what you can do with timelines and how powerful they are. So let's get started. Um, real quick though, I just wanted to mention my Kickstarter for my book. And I'm going to put a link here because that's still going on. And if you haven't checked that out, um, take a look real fast. I'll put it at the end of the video as well in case you'd like to watch this first. Um, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add a new object. You can see I've already got a, I've already got a sprite, which is just a red box for a filler sprite for the enemy. So we're going to call this object enemy. And we're going to use a basic state system. So put in a create event. And I'm just going to do initialize the enemy in this code for the create event. And we're going to do state equals. Um, we'll just call this wait. This is the wait state. Okay, and press the green check mark. Now we're going to add a new event, and this is going to be a step event. And inside of here, we're going to have what's called a switch statement. Control the states using a switch statement. Now, if you haven't ever heard of a switch statement before, that's okay. I'll explain it. So switch state. Basically, all it does is it checks the value of this variable, which is state in our case. And then we can give it certain cases and have it do different things depending on what this, this variable is set to. So the first one we're going to do is going to be case weight, right, which is the state that we're set to. And then you do a colon and then you'll do tab and we're just going to run a script. Script wait state. Now we haven't created this script yet so it's going to give us an error message and then do break here. So what this switch statement says is basically it's just like an if statement. If state equals wait then run this script. But switch statements are actually, um, I'm pretty sure in GameMaker that they are a little bit more, um, uh, uh, they, they, they don't take as much um, processing power as a break, or as a if statement, like an if else statement, because of the break. It breaks out and it won't check the other cases once it hits it. And I think think an if, st if else statement will check them all, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But they are nicer to read. So we're going to do case move up. That's going to be a uh, state that we're going to create. Script move up state. And in fact, uh, well, we'll leave the space there on that. Okay. Break case, move right, script, move right, state, um, break. Let me maximize this real quick so we've got more room. Case, move down, script, move down, state break case move left script move left state 
break. Now we need to go create all of these scripts because none of them are working. You can also do a default, which means if it doesn't equal any of these, what do you want to do? But we don't really need to do that in this case. So let's come back here and let's create all these scripts. So this one will be script wait case, script wait case. And in this script, we don't need to do anything because the enemy is just going to wait. It's just going to sit there. So that's kind of pointless, but maybe you want your enemy to animate a certain way if he's waiting there or something like that. So script move up uh, state. And this should be state, not case. Script move up state. There we go. Let's come into here change this to state. I messed that up. Okay, there we go. Um, for this one, we actually want to do something, right? Y minus, let's do minus equals two. He'll move really slow. Duplicate script move move right state move right state x plus equals 2 duplicate the move up script move down state move down y plus equals 2 and let's duplicate the move right script move left state move left state and x minus equals 2. Awesome! So now our enemy has a bunch of scripts that would control oh let's set a sprite to him and create a room and let's put him in the room and I really wish that that didn't default so large but whatever okay there we've got an enemy in our room and I'm going to give it a green background color just so that that's nah, grass maybe so okay now what we're going to do is we're going to create a timeline that's going to control how this um, enemy moves so come up here and you'll see this little uh, hourglass thing click on that and that creates a new timeline and now you're gonna see a screen that maybe you've never seen before because some people don't um, use timelines very often but it looks kind of like if you look on this side it looks kind of like the object screen but then on this side it looks pretty different so we're gonna call this timeline AI for artificial intelligence just TL underscore AI now a timeline has two things in it. It has moments and it has actions. Now the moments are the time section of the timeline and the action is what you want to do each set of those times. And moments are in um, moments are set up in the the just the same speed as the room. So if you do so if your room is set to a 30 room speed, that would be 30 frames per second. Um, and then you add a moment into here for 30 steps, then that would be one second. So let's actually do that. Let's add a moment, and we're going to add this one as 30. So we've added a at step 30. We can tell this timeline to do something. Well, we know this timeline is going to control, we're going to run this timeline inside of the object. So after one second, let's have our enemy move down. So let's create a piece of code here and we're going to call this move down and we're just going to do state equals move down. So we're going to set the enemy's state to move downward. Okay. And let's add another one in and let's do this one at, oh, let's do it at 120. And at 120 steps into the timeline. 
Let's make him move back up again. Move up. State equals move up. So we'll have him move back up again at 120 steps. Now let's add another one in. And let's do this one at 150 steps in. So we're adding 30 onto what it was before. And let's have him move to the right. Move right. State equals move right. Okay. Let's add another one in at, oh, let's go with 180. So we'll just add another 30 in. And let's set this one to move to the left. Move left. State equals move left. Okay. And let's add another one in. And let's do this one at 210. Add in another 30 steps. And on this one, we're just going to stop. So state equals wait. So we'll set him back to the waiting state. Okay. Easy enough, right? We've got all these steps. Um, all these different moments in our timeline and each of them has its own little action what it's going to make the make the enemy do so now how do you run the timeline well it's pretty easy just come into the create event and there's something called timeline index and so each object has its own timeline that's assigned to it so timeline index equals TL underscore AI, which is the timeline we created. Then we want to start it. So timeline running equals true. So that's going to start the timeline. But we also want to start it at the uh, position zero. We want to make sure that we're starting it at the very start of the timeline because you can actually start it in the middle if you wanted. Timeline position equals zero. So that's the very beginning of the timeline. And then the last thing we're going to do is make sure that this timeline doesn't loop because you could have it loop and then it would just start over at the beginning after the very end, right? But we don't want to do that for this example. So we're going to set loop to false. So that's pretty easy in the create event. We assign a timeline to this object using timeline index. We set the timeline position to zero. We start the timeline at the zero position. And then we set loop to false. So at the end of the timeline, it will just stop. And hopefully this works. Um, let's run the game and see what happens. <laughs> and make sure that this actually works. These are just the basics. And you might not quite understand how powerful this, powerful this can be, but you can see he moves down, moves back up, moves right, moves left, and then he stops and waits there. So the enemy did exactly what we wanted it to do. It followed that exact timeline that we gave it and went through each action in the timeline. Now, the best way to use this, in, well, I'm not, I'm not an expert, so I don't know the best way to use it, but a way that I think is really powerful that has worked really well for me is to have the enemy have its own states, right? And it chooses its states kind of randomly as it's walking around. So it'll move up, move down, move left. And these are kind of random things. They're not necessarily in a timeline. But then when the enemy sees a player, it will change into a chase state. And in the chase state, it'll execute a code where it runs towards the player, right? Well, when it gets to the player, this is when timelines are really useful because you can have it stop for a couple um, steps and then jump towards the player and attack. And then maybe maybe you can have it, if it misses the player or whatever, you can have it like jump back. And this would be like a sequence of events that the artificial intelligence would, would do that aren't random anymore. It's like a sequence that you would want. And you would set those up in a timeline like this. So this is a sequence 
of actions that I've set this enemy to do and it will follow this sequence of actions and uh, these are this would be something you wouldn't want to be random um, this sequence of actions like jump forward attack and then jump back you know and maybe maybe dodge or whatever and it's just a sequence of actions maybe if your player attacks at the enemy he'll try and dodge it and if he does then he'll do a sequence you know uh, a special sequence where he'll attack and then run away or whatever so that's the powerful thing about timelines and artificial intelligence is you can create a sequence that they will follow and it's really really powerful so I hope this video helped you at least learn the basics of how to use timelines um, I'm going to put the link here for my Kickstarter again with just a shamelessly plugging this in these videos but I really feel like um, I've been working hard on the book the last little while writing on it every day and I'm really excited about it and I strongly feel that it will help you guys out quite a bit it'll be a reference that you can have um, right next to you while you're working on your game you won't have to have um, you won't have to like switch between YouTube videos and watch part of the video and that's kind of annoying sometimes so you'll have the reference right there next to you you can check and uh, get information from there. So thank you guys for watching. Be sure and like, favorite, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. Um, that helps me out a lot. So I really appreciate you guys, and I will talk to you guys later.